Well, welcome back everybody. And as promised, uh, remember last weekend I said that we were gonna go find um, that head frame and incline shaft? Well, here we are, we made it. Uh, I drove way, way out in the middle of nowhere. Well, heck, the whole, ne practically all of Nevada is way out in the middle of nowhere. You guys are probably tired of hearing me say that by, by now. But anyways, we're here at this site. And when I got here, the first thing that I did is I went up by the head frame because I was real excited that we'd be getting down into that mine today. But gosh darn it, turns out that this location is pretty, pretty touristy. So uh, it's either a patented mining claim and because it doesn't look like something that the BLM would erect around the opening of the shaft. It looks like something probably a, the patented mining claim owners did. Um, I'll show you folks here in a minute. But at this same location, there's what I call a tourist cabin, okay? These things are scattered all over Nevada. And uh, what people like to do is waypoint them on their maps and load up the family and friends and their Jeeps and four-wheelers and side-by-sides and head on out into the middle of nowhere and go to each one of these locations and scratch or write their name in to let, let everybody know that they were here. So uh, even though everybody knows where this location is, I thought I'd go ahead and show it to you. It's pretty darn cool. So let's get started with this cabin. Well, that's kind of neat. Look at the... Uh, Somebody put together an old wind chime. They found a whole bunch of parts and pieces and this and that and thingamajigs laying around and made a wind chime out of it. <laughs> Couple old boots, kerosene lantern, and a bunch of plates made out of aluminum that people have scratched their name into and hung them on the wall. Okay, what's over here? Yeah, more of the same. We've got uh, 2012, 2007, 2006, 2015, 2013. Oh, here's an older one. 2000, 2002. Okay, well, let's go inside and see what we can find in there. Hey, old Bob, if you drop a piston, I know where we can get one right there. What do you think? Press for room service. Yes, sir. I think room service is out to lunch. Pull down to open. Well, the door was already open when I got here, so let's just invite ourselves right on in. Okay, well, what do we have? As expected, a whole bunch of business cards. Oh, we have a guest sign-in book. Huh. What's this on the cover? Abandoned and forgotten places. Wait a second. Someone else, did someone steal the name of my YouTube channel? Wait, we got another one up here on the wall. All right, what's going on? <laughs> yes, guys, I was in here ahead of time. I had to check it out. <laughs> Just fooling with you. But all right, let's see. Uh, What's the last entry? What's the date? The very last entry were some people from Oregon. Uh, July 26th, 2019. What's the first entry? Hmm, people from Las Vegas back in uh, August 30th of 2014 is the oldest log. Okay. What do we have up here? 2010, 2013, 08, 2016. Here we've got a bunch of reading material and uh, off to my right over here. There we go. If you get hungry for some soup or some sloppy joe, we got you covered. And then afterwards, when you get a good case of indigestion, there's a roll of Tums. <laughs> <laughs> What's over here? <laughs> oh, bunch of uh, pack rat traps and mice, mouse traps. A bed if we need it. And a case and a half of water. Good deal. OK. 
Okay. I see you in your sleep when you're not even looking. Spooky. What's in here? Hormel chili? That's my favorite. Hey, Bob, we got some sour cream and onion chips in here, man. Nice. Oh, you can even dip it in some Alfredo sauce. Wait, I think, I think Quackers likes Alfredo. Oh, hold on a second, folks. What's the date on that can? August 2016. Expiration, yeah. You eat that and you're going to need those Tums. <laughs> Uh-oh, what do we have here? No, I can't show that to you folks. We might have kids in the crowd in the crowd. <laughs> Bunch of magazines. Let me just put it to you this way. I just I just noticed a big a big bag of <clears throat> Colorado. We'll leave it at that. All right. Well that is Pretty much it for in here. This time we're gonna, what do you say, we close the door behind us. And we're gonna latch it and leave it just like I found it. There we go. Okay. Well, let's uh, look around the outside of it real quick. Why not? There's a door that goes into that bedroom we were just in. And uh, let's around over here. Oh, we've got an outhouse. Okay. Shall we explore the outhouse? Okay, let's. Let me guess, are we gonna get splinters? Or is some gonna, somebody gonna be kind and leave us a toilet seat? Let's find out. Oh, good deal, we're not getting splinters today. That's always a good day. <laughs> a one-seater, no encouragement there. <laughs> All right, let's keep on uh, working this way. And that is going to be it, folks. All right. Well, there is a tour of the, what's called the state line cabin. Now, if you folks, you folks find this thing and you come on out here, do your best to, you know, always, always leave things at the way, way, way that you found them. Um, respect the site, please. And, uh, and yeah, so that other people can, can come out here and enjoy it too. That would be great. All right, well, I'm gonna take you folks up to the head frame and uh, show you what I was talking about earlier. I'll meet you up there. Okay, we're up here at the head frame. And this is what I'm talking about. See, somebody was up here and they framed it off all nice and neat brand new lumber and then put the sheet metal across it. So at one time that's where you had your your pulleys up there and then mounted back there. Let me show you. So you got your, your cables running here at a 45 degree angle. They'd, they'd go up there to those pull to the pulleys. And then uh, the cables would stretch back this direction. And here's where your, your winch motor would have been located on one of these, either right down there or up here. 
drop, dropped and bolted down on these big studs. Okay, off to my left. Let's see. Oh, okay, then over here. We have what looks to be, what, maybe this was dynamite storage magazine. Yeah. Yep, dynamite storage. Okay. And then, uh, Let's see what else we have here. Over here. Oh yeah, I got something, something right over there. I'll just meet you folks over there. Okay, coming up on uh, what looks to be another storage powder, or uh, dynamite storage magazine. And somebody scratched their initials into it, 2001. With a big pack rat nest. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, here's the door. What's left of it? Okay. Now, down below us was the mill site. So I'm going to walk down there, and then we'll just... Together, we'll just walk up through the mill site, see what we can find. I'll meet you down there. Okay, we're further on down at the mill site. Looking off to our left, you can see the, the tailing pile. Okay, off to the right here. Okay. Well, well, where have we seen one of these before, folks? It was, uh, remember the horseshoe-shaped trestle and the, uh, the uh, uh, holojadit, standing outside the holojadit? There was one exactly like it. And uh, there was another one almost exactly like it down in uh, the bottom of that 400-foot shaft I crawled down into. Uh, well, I forget what the episode was a few episodes back same thing. Yeah, that's uh, that's to hold compressed air. That's what that's for And these older 55 gallon drums Notice how they put the rings Right there So you can so you can manhandle them and roll them around You won't find that on uh, newer 55 gallon drums It's kind of neat An old chain laying there, all kinds of stuff. It looks like uh, what's left of an old meat grinder. Oh, I see what they had. Okay, so it looks like it's possible they were doing some cyanide leaching. See this? So they built one, two, three, four, five, six um, pylons, and then on top of them pylons, they had a holding tank. See the perimeter of it here, that old wooden ring? It was probably the holding, holding tank was made out of wood. And then uh, we're definitely in the, in the real early, early 1900s, because see how the pipe, look at this pipe. It's made by flat, flat steel that's been rolled into a pipe and then riveted like a candy cane. That's really old. 19, oh shoot, 1920s, 1910s, somewhere in there. Okay, let's get up on these pylons. Here's another set of pylons we're standing on. And at one time, this too would have had a, uh, a tank 
And then the third set is right above me, right here. And another tank would have sat right there. So we're definitely doing uh, cyanide leaching. Okay, I'll meet you folks around the corner of this big wall here. See you up there. All right, made it back up here. We're on uh, top, a little bit further up on the upper part of the mill site. And this offers us a perfect vantage point for me to explain to you as close as I can to exactly what was going on here. So the ore is coming up out of that incline shaft over there. Okay, then after that, they're gonna carry it, take it across. You can see the beams up there from where an old trestle used to be. Somewhere right in this location, there was either a, a series of stamp mills or a big uh, ball mill with ball bearings in it that used to crush up the ore. Okay, then somewhere right in here, I'm guessing was probably uh, a place where they can extract the free mill gold. And then after that, it starts getting really, really fine. So then they're gonna run the material off here to my right. And if you look down, you're gonna see a total of uh, four pylon sets. There's one, two, three, and four. And each one of those pylon sets would have had big, big uh, wooden barrels, maybe uh, lashed on the outside with um, some sort of a steel tin perimeter, and then a big bolt all the way around it, uh, ratcheted down nice and tight. And that's where the material would come in and they'd mix and keep it into a, a suspended slurry. And then, and then when they aerate it, they're, they're also pumping air into it. That's why you have your compressor tanks down here. That, that creates bubbles and brings the gold up to the top of the slurry in this kind of like a bubbly mixture. And then you probably had guys down here on uh, some sort of a, a platform. And then what they would do is they would rake off that slurry that's coming up that the bubbles are making and that's what they would keep and send that over to be refined and then uh, on the last tank there from there that's where everything spit out and by that point there wasn't any more gold so they just dumped it on the ground and you end up with what you see out there uh, gi <laughs> gigantic uh, tailings pile that's slowly but surely working its way all the way down the valley so this tells me this was uh, definitely a gold operation. Probably some silver in it too. I mean, I'm seeing, you look down here at the geology, here's some, here's some breccia. We got quartz, um, andersite, not, I mean, not, yeah, no, not andersite. Um, oh, see, yeah, there it goes again. Darn word escaped me. There's some, there's some limonite. Um, yeah. Yeah, gold and silver, folks. Okay, well, I'm going to work my way back up to Old Bob. And off here to my left, there's uh, something going on. They were digging after something. Who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky and find, find a location where we can come in uh, on a sideways drift level to access the incline shaft. That would be cool. All right. I'll be back in a minute. Look at this, folks. So I was working my way up the up the waste rock pile, and I knew that if I worked my way along where the old, where the trestle used to be, there was a good chance that uh, I'd find a piece of piece of uh, ore that probably fell off the carts. And indeed, I did. Look at this! What a gorgeous piece of ore! You've got everything going on here, quartz calcite those are your crystals that are sparkling in the sunlight there the uh, darker gray stuff is uh, is your sulfides that's your silver that's in through there you see all the uh, the rust material okay well the rust is uh, precipitating out uh, the same as uh, as like li like limonite that's why you're seeing rust in there there you can see all kinds of sparklies that's your calcite crystals. And you're probably, well, you might see it on the camera right in here. I'm seeing a bunch of pyrites. So, yep. 
that is uh, that is what needs to go to the crusher and get get crushed up in a powder and then put through the process so you know this is this is where the bulk of gold comes from gold is not traditionally something that where you can just walk right into a mine and you see it coming out of the walls first of all if the deposit was that rich you're not going to see it inside of a mine because the miners have already taken it out but the majority of the gold and, and, and the wealth obtained from gold mines comes from rock just like this and tons of it. You got to crush it up and you got to put it through process. Occasionally, yeah, you're lucky and you will uh, get into a pocket and you'll find stringer gold, but uh, that's kind of rare except for some of the real, real popular mines like Comstock um, and up there by uh, Round Mountain. Yeah, Round Mountain, Nevada, they they pulled out a bunch of really nice stuff um, with, with gold that you could actually see, uh, specimen gold. I, I, I was told that they take that and uh, they don't sell it at spot value. That spe specimen gold is actually worth a lot more in its natural state, hanging within the, uh, within the uh, quartz, for example. Yeah, neat. Nice specimen. Okay. Back to old Bob, and then we're gonna head that direction and see what we see if we can't find a drift level. Level, I'll meet you over there. Okay, folks, I didn't drive too far, and here we have a powder magazine. And you you always know a powder magazine when it's they're gonna typically be buried with dirt, okay, and then they're gonna have a vent out the back of it somewhere, just like you're seeing right there. And the reason they build them this way so that if uh, if there was a problem and all the dynamite exploded, at least it would be somewhat contained. <laughs> I say somewhat, because uh, this whole thing just goes kablooey, and the fly rock goes everywhere, and you end up with a big crater in the ground. But uh, yeah, no, they did them this way so that they could keep the dynamite cool and with uh, nice, nice circulating ventilation which keeps everything dry. Keep your powder dry. Before we go in there, what do we have up? We've got one vent for this one. Oh, I'm seeing another vent back here. Oh, we have a, we have a smaller one here. Aha! Two magazines. Okay, folks. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you, why would they have two magazines, nice and tight and close together? I'll let you think on that for a moment. I'll tell you here in a minute. Okay, let's see what's in here. Rattlesnakes. Any rattlesnakes? Nope. Okay, and at one time there was a shelf that went across there. Uh huh. Okay, turn it back around. Now let's go explore this other one. Somebody drug an old chair in here. Okay, let's look in here. If I can step around the old chair. There we go. And this is where your dynamite was stored. There's this old sleeping bag on the floor. Not sure what was in that box, but uh, has a date on it of 2006. Okay, stepping back out. Okay. So why have two magazines right next to each other? 
All right, well, here's the answer, because this is where you kept your dynamite, all right? And that one up there, that's where you kept your blasting caps. And you got to remember, the only thing there, there's the only thing that you can use to initiate dynamite, well, other than <laughs> shooting at it with a high-powered rifle, is you need a blasting cap, okay? And you don't want those two stored together. I mean, if the blasting cap is the only thing that's going to initiate the dynamite, you don't want to keep them in the same building. That wouldn't be smart. So there's where your blasting caps are. Here's where your dynamite is. All right, off to my, or right behind me. We got a shack over there. Let's see what that's all about. Meet you over there. All right, we were just right over there by the magazine. We got a shaft here. Let's see if we can find a. Uh, let me look. BLM's got this one fenced off pretty good. Here's a place where there's a broken wire. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Let's see what this is all about. There's the manway, and yeah, we're not getting down into that one. Oh, I see a uh, down in the very bottom. There's a helmet, a yellow construction helmet down in there, and that's it stops right there probably 75 feet down all right what's over here we're scratching around these old site old sites sure is a lot of fun isn't it Okay, what did this used to be here? A winch house? Yeah, I'll bet you. Yep, see on the floor, you got two cross ties, bolts. This is where your uh, diesel powered or steam powered winch is gonna be. Looking off to the right here, we've got two windows, a smaller one and a bigger one. That's where your cables are going to go out. And then this one here, here, let me get over here and show it to you. They had some sort of a block and tackle configuration. That's what this, these cross ties are for. That would circle the cable back circle the cable back and then go down into the incline shaft. Let's see what that's all about. There we go. Cool. Hmm. Think there's anything interesting in there, folks? Well, there's only one way to find out, right? Kind of kind of slippery. Okay, maybe if I scoot on my butt and get to that point, there we go. Uh-huh, we got a little hose down here looking for rattlesnakes. Not seeing any. Okay. All right. What's back here? 
just a little drift and it pinches off to nothing. Turning around, we've got another little Yeah, another drift thing here. Now see how they're chasing after this quartz? You can see the quartz vein. And then when we get back into here, right there. Yeah, but it just played out to nothing. All right. Well, Let's uh let's see what's down here. Uh, I gotta find a place to put my feet here, folks. There we go. Uh, I'm seeing a snake. Old dried up one. Yeah, and this this drift is Pinched off with erosion, darn it. What do we have here? We got an old... That's a... Uh, that's a bull snake. Or a gopher snake. Yeah, old dead one. There's his head. There. Okay. Shoot. I was hoping that this would be a, another access point, maybe into the larger mine. Okay, looking back up. All right, I'll, I'll just meet you folks uh, back outside the mine. I'll meet you up there. All right, a moment ago, we were just right over there on the other side of that straight vertical shaft with the broken ladder. Now I headed over this direction and we've got an added up here. Let's see what that's about. Oh look, somebody uh, somebody was doing some prospecting. They dug a hole right there. They dug another hole right here. <laughs> that's smart. You know why that's smart? Because gold always congregates into the lowest point of anything. Um, so at one time they came in here with a piece of heavy equipment and dug this big trench out to probably sample it. And then fast forward many years of rain and erosion, maybe some of that gold worked out into the bottom and somebody came along and said, hey, I'm gonna dig down into the very bottom of this and see if we can't find some shiny. Let's see what this, this added is all about. Here's another one. Probably filled up a five, just enough to fill up a five gallon bucket. Take it back home, pan it out. Uh-huh. What's this, an open stope? Yes, it is. All right. Oh, come on. Trying to get over the fence without cutting myself. Yeah. Top part of an open stope. Cool. Well, let's take a closer look at it. Any snakes? Nothing there. There we go. Whew, catch your breath. Look at these stoles. Now here's a good vantage point. Remember I was telling you? So at one time, after they put the stoles in, then they run their planks across. That's so the men had a place to stand and then they can drill up 
into the ore body, but it looks like right here they cleaned it all out. Then when they're all done, they pull the planks, leave the stoles because they're too darn wedged in to try to remove. That's why they always leave them behind. So we have an open stope of some sort here. Maybe I'm going to peek around. Let's, let's see if I can't peek around the corner. See if this is accessible. There we go. Ah, oh, shoot. That would definitely require rope, rope work to get to that level. And even if we went over there, same deal. Hmm. Well, that wouldn't be that hard to run a rope down there. But as you folks know, that's an activity that where you really should have two people with you. But all those stoles is pretty cool. Okay, turn it back around. We're not gonna be able to get into this one, folks. That's okay, I think there's a few more around here. I'll meet you folks back outside by old Bob. All right, back outside. Old Bob's all right over there. There's those powder magazines or dynamite magazines we looked at earlier. Now we've got something off that direction. I'll meet you over there. All right, we were just up there. There's the, the mine site, mine and mill site. We were over there. Worked our way down. And it looks to me we've got ourselves um, maybe a kiln. At one time it did have a door on it. This was either a kiln or at one time there was a building right here that we would be we'd be standing inside the cabin right now and this rock wall is all that's left maybe that's just like a fireplace you can see that you've got a couple of uh flues there's a flue and there's a flue right there i'm gonna put, I'm put my money on uh that what's this here oh just a little little prospect into this uh shallow epithermal here and that's what this is. See this uh, white material, all this calcite and sulfides, sulfur coming up out of the ground, you can see it. This is a shallow epithermal. Wouldn't surprise me if we have a shaft right over here. Let's go check it out. I'll, I'll meet you over there. Okay, what do we have? Off to my right, that was the cabin we explored when we first started things off. Okay. Well, at one point, at one time it could have been maybe like a tool shed. I'm looking at the uh, the walls and places. See if I can't find any scratches or writing. Not seeing anything. Looks like they had some flower planters here in the window. <laughs> All right. Now the reason I'm showing you this this site, guys, or actually the reason I'm being kind of just you know wide open with the information is this is a real well-known location. But uh, um, for all you watching this who are thinking about coming out here and exploring it, just remember respect your heritage. Um, we have enough people in the world already that are doing all kinds of harm to historical land landmarks. Oh, it's just a, it's a mini little ore bin. Okay, and up top, 
they had a, kind of think of it like a loading dock and a hopper yeah they would load ore what's this over here big water tank look at they lined they lined the whole inside of it with stucco and of course people have to come out here and shoot the heck out of it I tell you some people just weren't raised right you boys dropped on your heads <laughs> okay back to old Bob so now we've done run out of uh, places to explore within the general vicinity of the uh, the mine and the the uh, mill site. So I'm going to run around in all these little roads and we'll see if we can't find something else. I'll be back. Real quick folks, look at this. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Somebody came out here and drug, drug their computer. See there's there's the motherboard, there's the case. Over here is a heat sink and a fan. But here, look at here, here's the best part. Let me show you. So they bring the computer all the way out here, I'm guessing, so that they could shoot it with their, I don't see any bullet holes in it, but I'm, I'm guessing that's why. I mean, why would you drag your darn computer all the way the heck out in the middle of nowhere? But look. You know what that is? That's the hard drive. They didn't remove the hard drive from their from their computer. If I wanted to, I could take that back to base camp. I could plug plug into uh, right there. There's your power. There's your DIN plugs. Plug right in, and I could find out who dropped this computer out here. And darn it, if I did, I would send it back to your dumb, you know what's C O D. <laughs> Stop littering up the desert. All right, continuing to looking looking around. All right, folks, back again. Sorry about that. I I get worked up every now and then when I'm when I'm out in these beautiful places and I see modern trash scattered all over the place. It just it just upsets me. Um, we were just right down over there. Okay, where that uh, the big big barrel was and the computer. Turning back around. We've got one, two, and maybe a third, but I'll bet that's a shaft up there, but we'll look at it anyways. But let's head over here and see what these two are all about. I'll meet you over there. Take a look at all the quartz in this dry wash here. Look at that. Notice how it looks very similar to that piece we found earlier. What a great place for a placer operation, but you'd still I mean, really, you should crush all this up. And that's what they're going after. Look up on the side of the hill there. Look at that quartz vein. But see this really, really white stuff, in my experience, um, I've never had much luck finding any gold in that, see? That bull, bull quartz there. There's two more big hunks of it there and there. Yeah. Nope. Bull quartz, uh, I mean, you may have some gold in, in and around that stuff, but it just seems like every time, from everything I've read and my experience and pe other people's experiences, there's just never been much gold in it. But that's why they, uh, that's why they put in these adits here, because maybe they thought if they could get down underneath and maybe get into the base, get underneath it there might be something interesting what do we have uh-huh I'm gonna get my flashlight to work here we go what do we have in here Not a tight fit. <laughs> Jeez. 
All right, one second. Oh, here we go. Right now, I'm on my knees and my head is almost touching the back of the mine. We've got a drift that went that way and stops. And, oops, I just pressed the wrong button. And they started working a winds going down that way and it's choked off right down there. Okay. Well, that's it for this one. Short and sweet. <clears throat> Let's head back outside. Go to the next one. You know, the waste rock piles aren't that big, so I'm not holding my breath. I'd be real excited just to find a rattlesnake. I mean, goodness, we've been in enough mines already. <laughs> What's that smell? And that's, uh, that's where we just were, right there. Okay, Mr. Rattlesnake, nope. And somebody came in here and started a fire. See all the soot on the back of the mine? And then right here, this is where the level of the smoke was. Somebody came in here and uh, chipped out a bunch of material after the fire. See that? Maybe chipped it out and took it, took it back and sampled. Oh, well. These are modern, uh, modern, modern timbering here. Could be on somebody's claim. And uh, ugh, the smell of bat guano, yum. Oh yeah, see, look up here. So sometime after the fire, they came in here and they were chipping away at this quartz vein and sampling it. You can see here where they're beating it with a hammer there, there. Um, look at the, uh, wow. All right, let me try to get a good shot with this camera, holding it real still. All right, see the vein? There's a beautiful layer of fool's gold pyrite right there. How cool. Nice vein of pyrite. Look at that. Okay. And that's the end of this one. Wow. Here's another angle of it. That's pretty cool. With the black stuff, the, the grayish, blackish stuff there, that's silver. That's silver sulfide. And of course, you got your bull quartz here, and then scattered in and amongst it is the pyrite. Neat. All right. There was a barcode on that lumber. I was seeing if it might have had a date on it. Oh, here we got some snake tracks. Look on the floor, right there. 
So one slithered that way, one slithered off that direction. We had a snake in here at one time. Okay. Well, there's one more, probably a, sha a shaft. I'll meet you folks up there. Okay, we were just right down there. Work my way up this dry wash. Look at all the quartz in that. It wouldn't, well, see, I can, if you look right over there, there's a, there's a claim stake. Wouldn't surprise me if somebody has this valley uh, claimed up for a placer, a potential placer operation. But off to my right here, Look how the miners stacked up all these rocks. So they stacked it up. So this pile here is what would have been hauled off the mountain to the crusher. That pile there is your waste rock, worthless material. Yeah. Look at they went through all of this work to pull this out of the shaft and they never got it hauled off to the mill. What do we have here? Is this an incline? Oh, it just might be. Yes, it is. Nice. Watch out, barbed wire. Goodness. Cool. Yeah. Is it accessible? Let's find out. Nice hard rock, good deal. Don't have to worry about anything falling on our heads. Just have to watch out for critters. Oh, that's a nice welcome relief. Cool, cool air. Okay, folks. Now look at what we've got here to the right. Look at this vein. It's uh, one, two, two feet, it's about two feet, two and a half feet thick. And they're working it all the way down. Let's see how far we can go. Uh huh. There we go. All right, looking at the vein, what they were going after off to our left. Look at all the silver sulfides in there, right through there. This thing probably had more silver in it than it did gold. If it was really high value, they would have drifted these veins off left and right. And we got down here. Okay, I'm going to try to sit on my butt and uh, yeah, we've got a whole bunch of erosion stuff going on here. It's pinched off that way and I don't know if I get the camera down there, but you folks can see. Uh, let's look here. <laughs> nope, she pinched us out. 
unfortunately years and years of erosion have choked it off darn hey at least we looked looking back up and out you want to I'll take you back up with me what the heck that oh piece of limonite okay pretty crumbly that one well that's it for this area folks so I guess it's time to hop back into old Bob and take some of the back roads around this place and see what we can find all right I'll be back as soon as I catch my breath and goodness take a drink of water I'll be back Okay, back again. I thought that since we were driving right past them, I'll, uh, I'll show these to you. We've got a bunch of stone foundations here from the original miners. There's uh, some over there. Another building was right there. Two more buildings were right up there and behind me. Now we're not gonna go to every single one because pretty much they're all really alike. But the interesting thing about these is that those, these miners, they had to carry these rocks, these granite boulders, all the way over here and stack them up like this to make a foundation. Think of the amount of work that took. I mean, because, you know, compared to the size of my hand, look at the size of that boulder. And it looks like most of them came from well, let's take a look. Yeah, there, there's a pile in this hill, another pile over there, and then back behind me, that whole, that whole mountain, or whole hill over there, is nothing but granite. That's where they got it from. Okay, let's take a look at this. Yeah, they did a nice job. Look at how nice and straight that is. course right there is your fireplace it does get cold in the desert at night and we got one more over here let me quickly show it to you and then we're going to continue on I think I may have found a uh, location that's that we can get to, um, to finish off this this episode more of that uh, decayed decaying granite decomposing granite sorry hey once you expose that stuff to the elements it just falls apart and turns into sand what's over here Oh, they probably had some sort of a little another room here, maybe a pantry of sorts. Okay, well, we're going to get out onto this location, head back down to the main road, and somewhere, oh, I'm, I think it's uh, so it's southwest of this location, there's a couple other adits. Let's go over there and see what that's all about. Meet you over there. Okay, back again. Didn't, didn't drive... Uh, too much further from that last location I saw something up on the hill and indeed we've got a another another incline shaft here folks 
this one's all busted up. There's nothing, hardly nothing left to the collar. Not to say you couldn't squeak down in there. Um, but turning around, look at the size of the waste rock pile. There's little to nothing here. So maybe that, sh that incline shaft only goes down in there. Probably not much more than 100 feet. And here's where they had the winch motor hooked up right there bolted down and that's what pulled the pulled the ore out of the incline shaft but up here I don't know if this is an adit or if it's a uh, dynamite magazine let's find out might be an adit Cool. That's a photo opportunity right there. I like that. <laughs> okay, let's go inside. Somebody named Lila. Again, I'm not, I'm not bringing in the uh, fancy camera because I'm more than likely this isn't going in very far. Oh, we've got a bat up here. One bat. And... An old, an old tarp. Actually, it's a tent. Why would you drag a tent? Oh, I see what they're doing. Okay. At least I think. Well, no, maybe. See, I was thinking they lay, they, they were just using this old tent as kind of like a, a tarp. They laid it down on the ground and then... Yeah, Mr. Bat. And then uh, they were chipping away at some of the ore above our heads here, and the ore was falling down on the tarp. I don't think that's the case. I think somebody just, they just drug it in here. Yeah, just to get it out of the wind. Okay. Now we've got to try to get back out without Mr. Bat flying outside. Maybe he'll stay right there. All right, Mr. Bat, come on. I'm just going to stay right here. There you go. Come on. Come on. Well, please don't fly outside. Ah, shoot, he did. Darn it. I don't like doing that, folks, because then now he's he could be uh, preyed upon by a, another bird. Okay. We got one more right over this direction. Let's hop back in old Bob and we'll go over there and see what that one's all about. I'll meet you over there. Okay, back, folks. Um... You know, immediately after I shut the camera off and I was hopping back into old Bob, I glanced up towards that uh, adit we just crawled out of, and I saw that bat fly right back in there. So I'm happy about that. We're good to go. Um, I don't like to see the critters getting eaten on my account. <laughs> so across the valley, look at what we have here. Another ore bin. Smaller one. And they rigged this one up in such a way... Where they could pa park a truck down back up underneath it and fill up fill up a dump truck haul it off to the mill but what's neat about this site it's right over here there we go
Okay, so the adit is right over here, turning around. They built the trestle. Right here. Let's see if I can get over to that board. There we go. <laughs> Very cool. Bring the ore cars out and dump them into the bin. Now they would, uh, looks like here they're, they're sorting the ore out. Um, certain kind of ore went into one, and certain kind went into another. Makes you wonder how they were doing that separation process. Well, let's head back over this direction, shall we? And see what the, uh, what's going on with this adit. Oh yeah, nice. And we've got rail going into it, folks. Excellent. Well, I think this one's gonna be a heck of a lot bigger. So uh, why don't I, I'm gonna head back over here to old Bob and break out the fancy equipment. Um, and we'll, we'll head on into this one, shall we? All right, I'll be back in a second. Okay, back again. We got the safety flag put out. Let's explore this old mine. So right off the bat here, see they're, they're taking out a vein that's on an angle. Oh, I'd say about a 45 degree angle from uh, lower right to upper left, All right? And there's what's left of, I think that was the old door at one time. Okay. What do we have in this one? For sale by owner. <laughs> well, we may have found someone's somebody's mine they're trying to sell. I had a bunch of stoles here. Small little stoped out section. Okay, continuing on. Yep. So, all right. We're in the main haulage added, of course, looking up to my left. Here's a nice view of the vein that they're taking out of here. Yeah. All right. And continuing on. Boy, they could have, um, geez, was this mine for dwarves? And, like Lord of the Rings, I mean, it's only about four feet tall. Oh, goodness. There we go. All right. Choose wisely to the right or to the left. Well, why don't we go to the right? Oh, okay. Backing up. Look at the calcite on the walls here, folks. Isn't that pretty? It almost looks like agate. Yeah. Okay. Oh, knock that off. There we go. All these darn uh, newer LED flashlights have that strobe feature. I don't much care for it. 
little drift off the left, but then it stops. What's in the barrel, hmm? Nothing in the barrel. The bear, berry, B-A-R-R-Y square. I can't quite make it out. A little drift going off here. Another one of those uh, sheets for putting ore on top of. Oh, okay. There we go. Larry. The Larry square set. <laughs> All right. Well, the rails go up to this point, but then stop. Okay. Turning back around. Back through the Larry Square set. Okay. And, uh... We're going to head back to that, to the other drift. Okay, so we were just off to the right there. Now we're going to continue on this direction. Somebody got a little bit uh, artistical with the on the post here. And what's in the bucket? Is that a honey bucket? Well, it looks like it was on fire at one time. There we go. Okay. Our first ore shoot. So we're going to have to take a trip up higher up on the mountain, folks, because we've got ourselves an ore pass and see if there's another, uh, see if there's another added above us. Okay, continuing on. See here, here they were attempting to make another ore pass. Right there. And maybe they missed their target. Okay, looking at geology above our heads. Take a look at the calcite forming there. Look at all the sparkles. Pretty. Another drill little drift going off to our right. Um, okay. Well, let's just climb up in here and see what it's all about, shall we? Doesn't look like it's been used <coughs> very often. Because they never never mucked it out. What's up in there? Oh, and that's where it comes to an end. Okay, I'm just going to back on out. Well, 
Well, I'm glad I have a hard hat. <laughs> that would have really hurt. Okay, continue on. What do we have back up in here? Boy, this rail has more twists and turns, I'll tell you. Okay. Back to another choose wisely. Well, I can tell you right now, this one just goes and stops right there. Okay. So let's continue on down this one. And there's another muck plate. And right here's where the mine ends. Right there. Turn it back around. Okay. I'll be right back, folks. Okay, back again. We're going to do something a little bit different here. I've got the camera in drone mode. As we work our way back out. See how steady that shot is? <laughs> how cool is that? It's like we're, we're flying a little mini drone back out of the mine. And just like that, there we are. Okay, I'll be back in a moment. All right, back outside, that was fun. And I did work my way higher up on the side of that hill because I was looking, looking, trying to find a location where that, um, the top part of that ore pass was that led down to the chute. And I think it, it was right up here on the other side of this ore bin. Um, but it's all collapsed in with uh, erosion rock, and it, it really wasn't an edit. I think what they were doing is they were working the top part of the vein, and uh, instead of hauling the ore down the hill, it was a heck of a lot e easier just to, to uh, carve out a chute down to where the ore cars are running and just drop the ore straight down that way and then run it out through the rail. That's what was going on. All right, well, that's going to do it for this episode. Um, things would have played out a whole lot differently if we would have been able to get into that really big incline shaft, but uh, unfortunately that's not the way it played out. So, all right, well, I'm going to get on off this, uh, this hill and out of this part of Nevada. I got about a hundred and some, something miles to drive back to base camp. And again, hey, thank you so much for coming along on all the, on, on these explorers. I appreciate it so much. And thanks to you, all my new subscribers. Hey, thanks for coming along. <laughs> I'm glad that you're into this sort of thing too. So, yep, I'm going to get on out of here. And as always, hey, um, as I like to say, respect your heritage and always respect your public lands. Okay, I'll see you folks next weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.